I want to thank you for joining us by television and social media, wherever you are today. We want to welcome you here. I have an awesome message for you. It is a devil-busting message, yoke-destroy message for the body of Christ. It is a, mess, a timely message for each and every one of us in the body. It's called Dead Men Don't Rise. This message is taken from a message that I did several years ago called Developing Godly Character. In that particular message, I talked about developing godly fruit in our lives. Not sour fruits, but juicy fruit that people can look at us and taste and see that God is good. Today I want to talk a little bit more on this particular topic, but I want to talk about becoming more like Jesus. Because you see, dead men don't rise. And in particular, I want to focus on the spirit of anger today. And we all deal with the spirit of anger because it is a normal emotion that every single human being deal with from day to day. But when this emotion takes hold of us and become excessive and become to a point where we tantrum or we lose control, then we are dealing with the spirit of anger. And we've got to break that particular yoke off of our lives. Let's go to Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 29. And I'll give you a minute to find that. I want you to think about Jesus today. What are two adjectives that you would associate with his character? We're going to read a little bit about the character of Jesus and the spirit of anger in our own lives. How do we become more like him? Well, we understand that we are dead to the things of the world and alive in Christ. We will be able to be able to follow Jesus in a way that is more effective. So developing godly character and dead men don't rise is something that I want you to keep in the back of your mind as we go through this lesson. I know you found Matthew the 11th chapter, verse 29. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Here Jesus literally there, I don't believe there's anywhere else that uh, the Bible commands us to learn of any particular thing. It does tell us to study, to show ourselves a, a proof, a, worker, a workman that need not be ashamed. But here Jesus tells us to take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. This is the rest that I am talking about. No matter what the weather, no matter what you're going through, being able to know that the old man is dead and you know, the old man cannot get a rise out of any situation. So we are to learn of him. And he said these are the two adjectives that best describe to him, that he is meek and lowly in heart. And he said, if we can become that way, we will find rest. We will be, that dead man will not be resurrected in us when different things happen to us. Um, I was in Miami this week and watching the news, I saw this particular video of a woman in a nail salon. She became so angry for whatever reason she became agitated and she took the entire display stand and just knocked the entire thing over. Sometimes there is a spirit of anger that could come upon us that we just lose total control. And that's what she did at that particular time, not thinking of consequences or, or you know what could happen as a result. And she ended up uh, doing damage for over $2,000, being so sorrowful of her behavior, 
being very apologetic, apologizing to everyone, but all these things could be avoided if we would take his yoke upon us and learn about him and try to have the character of Christ. Jesus seldom say a lot. He's usually very quiet or, and very straight to the point. And when we speak about meekness, we're talking about strength under control. You know, we could take, we could, uh, it's so easy for a person to squash an ant. But when you have strength under control, you don't use your power to do whatever you feel like doing, but you hold it under control. You do not, you know, just show your power because you have the ability to do so. So that's what he means by meekness and lowly in heart. There is a difference between being lowly in heart and meek. Here, lowly in heart means the heart is not puffed up. You don't value yourself above what you ought to value yourself. And for, for us, that's, that's a, a strong, that's a um, place that is not comfortable. We want to be the best that we can. We want to be confident and we want people, you know, we puff our own selves up. We sing our own songs. We pat ourselves on our back because we want to appear to others to be more than what we really are. But Jesus' character here says that he is meek and he is lowly in heart. So, you know, dead men don't rise, but, and, when you find yourself in a particular situation where you start to feel the symptoms of anger coming upon you, you know, some people, their mouth get dry. Some people will react so quickly and hitting someone, striking someone. Um, you know, some people will react with their mouth, saying things that they ought not to say and will regret later once they calm down. Um, and, you know, I've worked with emotionally, um, uh, students that are emotionally um, challenged and a lot of behaviors and, and problems that they get into is because they don't stop and think. We don't stop and think about consequences. And so I want to bring this message to you today, not a message of condemnation, but we need to have the mind of Christ. We need to have the character of Christ. And it is not easy to have the mind of Christ or the character of Christ if we don't take the time to spend time with Christ so we can become more and more like him. It is said that, you know, in the world of literature anywhere, anyway, that every one of us have a double ganger. A double ganger is a apparition, a ghost-like person that is in the image of a living person. So we all have a twin somewhere. I mean, how many times have you heard someone say, I met someone who looks just like you? See, if we're Christians, we should, you know, there's more than just one double ganger. And that is Christ is one, but the old man is another one. You know, good cop, bad cop, we all have that dual uh, reality that the old man is dead, but oftentimes he wants to resurrect. He does not want to control himself. He does not want to be meek. He doesn't want to be lowly. He wants to be out of control, being as fleshly, doing whatever his flesh tells him to do. So we should choose to have Christ as our double ganger. He should be our model of what we are to be modeling in this life. So Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 again says that, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Unless we're able to humble ourselves, not to think of ourselves more highly than we are to being prideful, full of pride, then we will not be able to find rest for our soul. We're constantly trying to re redevelop ourselves, re reinvent ourselves, trying to be something that we are not. So the word tells us to try to be meek. 
Try to be lowly. Now, I'm talking about the spirit of anger today. And we all know that the spirit of anger is not something that is so easily put to the side or dealt with. There are people who will purposely push your button. And they, the minute they find where your button is, they're going to do everything in their power to make you upset, to frustrate your purposes, to block you, to make you angry. So we have to know how to deal with that when that happens. But when we are dead in Christ, we won't get a rise. They will do what they do when we'll still be able to continue being ourselves, still continue to have the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy and peace towards those who are doing the wrong things toward us. And I have to tell you, there are days that it's not, it's not easy to turn the other cheek and, and, you know, have someone wrong you, or especially, I know with myself in particular, when I feel that I'm justified, when I feel that it, the wrong that is done is so outrageous, I, something rises in my spirit that says, no, enough is enough. And, and another thing that might make me angry is when I have to repeatedly say the same thing over and over and over. By the 10th, 11th time, I'm angry. I don't know about you. I don't know what sets you off. I don't know what your hot buttons are. But we all have them. And th they're not an excuse. Anger is normal. But they're not an excuse to do whatever we want to do, however we want to do it. But I can tell you definitely when we walk close to the Lord, when we pray and we ask God to put a guard at our mouth, that we're able to be more successful in our day. So we, it's important for us to you know, wake up with a mindset that today I am going to put a guard at my mouth that I won't sin against God. I'm going to write the words of God on the tables of my heart so I can remember them. You know, that's why the word of God tells us to write them upon the length of post and, and wherever we are to always keep them on the, fore, the forelet of our eyes that they would be before us always. So there is a rest that can only be found in Christ. And that is what we are laboring for, to enter into his rest. He said, if any man will come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow him. And his yoke is easy. That's why he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, Jesus is of the character when, for example, the woman who was taken in adultery was brought before him. He, he showed meekness. He could have uh, railed at the Pharisees that brought the woman before him and the people that came before him saying to crucify her. But he did not. He simply, you know, begun to write in the sand. That's meekness. And said, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Again, the Bible even reminds us that even a flask he would not break. You know, Jesus is meek and he's lowly. He's low in spirit. And if we are seeking in, to be like him, we must develop that lowliness. We all can develop it. You know, some of us are very loquacious. We, we love to talk. Some of us are very quiet by nature. But every one of us, no matter what our temperament is, in the natural, can develop godly character to become more like Christ. So that is what I am encouraging you to do because when anger begins to interfere with daily life, when anger begins to interfere with your relationship, then anger becomes a problem. It's no longer just a normal reaction. We are to be angry but not sin. Some people get angry like the, you know, the young lady I mentioned earlier and just destroy everything around them. But what purpose does that do for us? So we must learn 
the symptoms of anger. We must understand when it is that we are starting to get angry. You know, just the other day, I was praying. My husband and I were praying, and all of a sudden, as I was praying, this thought came to me, and it is that we could put sin under our feet. We are alive in Christ, and sin is supposed to be under our feet. This is, you know, common knowledge. Every Christian knows this. But sometimes we go on and on. We deal with so many different things. We have so many distractions, so many different things coming at us all at once. And we don't ever stop and realize that the right place for anger and all sin is in the right position is under our feet. And we have the power, we have the right to put it under our feet. And that's what I realized that day. And I said to myself, whatever you are right now that is bothering me, you're under my feet. And I could feel just, the, just by saying that. There's power in our words. There's power when we declare the truth that is in the word of God. And I felt a certain power come over me. And that's when I realized that dead men don't rise. We have to stay dead. We have to remind ourselves that we are dead. The old man is dead. And, old, and dead men don't rise. They don't resurrect. They must stay dead. And when we find ourselves getting angry, we have to realize that we can put anger under our feet. Let's look at Psalms 103. you said that you would never leave me nor forsake me. Well, why do I feel this way? I mean, if I was really created in your image, does that mean that you get depressed some days? God forgive me. I don't really mean to question you, but like a student driver, it's like I'm always ready to break. Now see, I was your boy when you delivered, but I really, I really want to avoid all the labor pains. The way to sin, well, what do you want from me? Is it something free? Well, then give it to me in an exchange. I guess I'll just hand over my dignity headshot. Since the wages of sin is death, right? It's like I've already been defeated. Well, I might as well just give you the victory. But see, what people fail to realize is, is people that feel like this in all states, nationwide, and sure, people are killing themselves daily, feeling as if nobody is on their side. So he was sitting up in the bed all alone, I remember. He had the handgun. It was on his side. There was no one there to stop him. That's blood in when the paramedics would be on his side. Man, I was so angry, emotional, and depressed, brother. I ain't got no chill prescription. No. Catch me outside. How about that? Cause see, I don't care how the doctor feel, and that's when I wonder, woman, what if I tie this rope around my neck when I don't feel so super? Man, what if I jump in front of a car and don't die? I guess I'll really be kryptonite with forecasts like I'm the weather. Man, ever since that green arrow flashed towards this little Justice League, it's like I hardly could win. No, I haven't been my best, but it's the last time I let another joker bat for me. I'm not feeling that marvelous. I had the drugs in my jeans. I had the steel in my hand like an X-Man. I was feeling like a crash dummy. Like I'm gonna try something. Like I'm a stunt man. You never live. As a matter of fact, you stuck by your side. And the only reason that you're feeling that way is because of your pride. Don't let that come as no surprise. But bro, you are made in his image. But one of his requirements is that he be uplifted. But if you lifting yourself up, you're guaranteed to be diminished. He opposes the proud. Bro, you being pressed down. But if you see that as depression, then that's your view that's fictitious. Put away them student driver feelings. Because you're ready to break, but you shouldn't be driving that vehicle anyway. Lean on him with all your decisions. He's got a doctor's precision. I guarantee you and your blessing to have a head-on collision. But on another note, why are you answering the sin? 
It's one thing to rebuke it, but but see now you're giving in. I can tell you an intellectual, and you know wrong from right. Yeah, the wages of sin is death. But do you know the rest of the scripture? Give for God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But if you're bored, tell me. I got some scripture for you, and I promise it's not too overwhelming. As a matter of fact, it's transformed lives in all states, nationwide. Now this fuck gonna get progressive, but let me assure you, I'm on your side. See, this guy cohabited with sin. But five years ago, I met life, and I was changed from within. I look on your face, I can tell you don't get where I'm coming from. So, so let me run it back. You see, it transformed lives in all states, nationwide. Now this flow gonna get progressive, but let me ensure you I'm on your side. Guy, co habited with sin. Five years ago I met life and I was changed from within. That's that full cup. But but you emotional, depressed, and, and you don't care how the doctor feel. Dog, that's not his will. He advises us to release all control, and when that walk starts to hurt. I'll prescribe you some Dr. Shows for sure. Bro, I'm trying to tell you, I tried this walk on my own, and Satan had me tripping. I mean, that masturbated me till I came to my senses, and I couldn't see freedom from an open door. And on the clothes, when Satan had a dead locked, I mean, my storm was black as day. He had my dread locked in. It was such a marvelous feeling when I met Jesus, and I'm just trying to help you see that you're above only and not beneath. Now, some people do struggle with depression, for the rest of their happy days. And it's just the enemy planting suggestive thoughts, but I'm still mad. TV broadcasting medications in living color just to get paid when my family matters. So be a family guy, because depression is not of God. It's just one of the many games that Satan play. You wanna play? Well, enter my PlayStation, cause see, I pray that God cover him and pace her like Paul George on the cover of 2K. And Satan, you gonna catch this L too. And if you try angles, then him and my God can box. And anybody in this circle getting x off right away. But see, I pray God reveal to you that you are not alone. You're never home alone. And suicide is not the way he cares greatly. That's why he carried the cross. He took that beat and he died on the cross, but he rose with all power on the third day. d way the Christian. Psalms 103 reads, verse 8, and I'll give you a second to find it again. Don't forget, those of you who are watching by television, but uh, we thank you for joining the Eternal Life Television channel. Uh, you can find these messages on my YouTube channel. You can find them on Facebook, on my social media. Uh, God has given me several messages that are very relevant in this particular season to the body of Christ, especially a warning to the church. Look for those messages and be encouraged as we continue to look at dead men don't rise. Again, we're talking about the spirit of anger. We're going to Psalms 103 verse 8. The Lord, and it reads, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. We can't become like him unless we learn what he is like. And the word says that he is merciful and gracious. He's merciful. You know, one of the biggest antidotes to anger is forgiveness. And forgiveness is not easy when you are harboring hurt and pain and many other emotions that are overwhelming. But the way to, the only way I would say to, to be able to deal with the spirit of anger is by being walking in the spirit. That's the only way that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we walk in the spirit, the spirit of graceful, uh, mercifulness, you know, be merciful, be kind, be gracious. And, and he is slow to anger that he's very long suffering. You know, sometimes, and I, I do believe that we're uh, very much patient to different people, to a different degree, depending on our relationship with them. Some people we have no patience for. And we can't tolerate even their presence. And I'm not saying that's something to brag about, but 
Jesus is slow to anger with each and every one of us. And he's plenteous in mercy. It's not, you know, you get one time and that's it. Three strikes, you're out. He's not that way at all with us. So we must learn to be slow to anger. And again, once anger enter our bosom, once that spirit lodges itself in us, it's like a dagger and it goes to work immediately. You know, it brings forth, you know, um, hatred. It brings forth uh, disagreement. It causes, a, causes us to speak out of character, causes us to act out of character, doing things that are ungodly and that are very fleshly. So we must learn to be slow to anger, and we must not let the sun go down on our anger. We must be quick to forgive. And sometimes being the bigger man requires us to go to the person who is wrong and ask for forgiveness. That's humility. That's meekness. That truly is what God expects from us. You know, the Bible says that even if someone sins against us, that we, set, we must forgive 70 times seven. How many of us can truly say we would go beyond seven times versus 70 times seven? So I, I hope I'm speaking to someone today who will, you know, who's dealing with the spirit of anger because this spirit must be addressed as such a destructive spirit. It robs us out of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It causes us to feel bad about ourselves, causes us not to, uh, you know, want to pursue godliness, and the enemy will take, you know, take advantage of us when we are dealing with the spirit of anger because it destroys our testimony when others see the way that we be behaved ourselves in an ill manner way. It destroys our testimony. And you know, a, a, good rep, a good name is hard to come by and it can be destroyed with one irrational act. So uh, again, Psalms 103 says, the Lord is merciful. He's full of mercy and gracious, full of grace and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. I want to look at another uh, scripture that is Proverbs, Proverb, the 15th chapter. And this uh, Prover Proverbs, as you're finding this, I'll continue just to talk here. Uh, Proverbs, the 15th chapter, um, really is a strategy, just like um, not allowing the sun to go down upon your anger is a strategy. Proverbs is also um, Proverbs, the first verse, is a strategy. You know, as I was saying before, um, some people will provoke you with their words. They will push your buttons. They will try to get you bent out of shape and out of character. And this can happen anywhere. And it, the, the enemy can use anyone, Christian, non-Christian, anyone. So, but a soft answer, according to Proverbs, the 15th chapter, verse 1, a soft answer turn away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So even when someone is attacking you verbally, you can still give a soft answer. They're angry at you, rightfully so, or maybe they're not even, uh, maybe they're in the wrong. But if you give a soft answer, sometimes people think you're just a wimp. They think that you're just someone who's weak, and oftentimes they'll walk all over you because you don't give them the answer that they were hoping for because they're looking for a fight, really. And when you give them a soft answer or you just avoid the entire situation by not answering at all, they think that you're weak and that they've really scored. But a soft answer turn away wrath. And there, you know, sometimes when people are coming at you, the best thing that you can do as self-defense in the spirit is just smile. 
Just smile and pray, and the Lord will make a way out with every temptation that, we're, you know, it, that we encounter. So soft answer, turn away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So we have to watch even when we're angry. Yes, even when we're angry, we have to watch what we say and watch how we say it. Because, again, dead men don't get a rise, no matter what is being said to them. They're not moved to the left or to the right hand. We have to learn how to be stable, having our feet on a solid foundation. We have to be firm, and our behavior cannot go up, down, sideways, and all about if we're going to walk, this Christian walk, victoriously. Let's go to another scripture, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 31. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 31. I believe has, even as we are reading the word of God, some of you out there are being delivered from the spirit of anger. You're being set free in the name of Jesus. See, Jesus Christ already paid the price for our redemption. He has already paid the price to set us free. And by his stripes, we are healed. We do not have to have this spirit of anger on us that it begins to control us. And we are not able to exercise self-control, which is the fruit of the spirit. We need to be long-suffering, another fruit of the spirit. And we need to also exercise Self-control. When those two things are out of place, then we're out of control. And we're no longer exhibiting Christ-like behavior. So Ephesians 4, chapter verse 31 states, no, let, uh, before going to verse 31, let's go to uh, the first through the third verse. It says here, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord... This is Paul speaking. Beseech you that ye walk worthy of the convocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You know, in uh, verse 3 says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. There is so much division, even in the body of Christ, even on, on a Sunday morning, there is a lot of division, but we must endeavor, we must fight. We must forgive one another very quickly, at least the enemy get the best of us all. We must endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit for there. He commands the blessing. Where there is harmony, where there is unity, then the anointing flows. There is liberty, and people can be set free. But where there is dissension, division, we divide the force, and we're less effective. So we must labor again to keep the unity as a bond, we must exercise love. You know, it's just such a beautiful thing when you go into a service and everyone just loves on you, they welcome you, they make you feel so welcome that you just want to continuously come back. We need to exercise love in order to have that bond. Love is our bond. Division will not keep the body of Christ together. We must have love for one another. We must love. You know, when you really, really, really love someone, they can do no wrong. It doesn't matter what they do. You can always see the good in them. You could always come up with an excuse as to, and rewrite the story as to why they did what they did. Because you're looking at them from the vantage point, from the uh, a spectrum, from the, uh, that point of view of love. And love will hide a multitude of sin. So let's, let's walk in love today. Let's make up in our mind 
to walk in love. Again, we must remember that dead men don't rise. And when you start to feel a rise in your spirit when people are doing certain things to you, you know, sometimes it's, you just have to be on the defense. It's not always that you're on the offense, that you're doing something, something to someone else. But I, I promise you, if you live long enough, sometimes we sin even unawares or ignorantly. We hurt people unawares. Sometimes we do things and people misinterpret our behavior and our actions and they can be hurt by our behavior. So none of us can really say that we are innocent. We all need to be so quick to forgive, so quick to ask for forgiveness, so quick to walk in the love that Christ has called us to walk in because it's by our love one for another that they will know that we are the disciples of Christ. I want to look at verse one again. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the convocation wherewith ye are called. We're called to this profession. We're professing that Jesus Christ is our Lord, that we were created in his image, that we are disciples of Christ, that we are like him. We have been a disciple taught, disciplined, and that his character abide in us. And as long as we are going back and forth, the old man, the, the new man, and there's a warfare going in the flesh between the old and the new, it's hard for people to really take us seriously as Christians. So we ought to walk worthy. We should have a desire to walk worthy of this profession, professing that we are Christ-like Christians. We are Christ-like. And verse 2 says, with all, the way we do this is with all lowliness and meekness. That, those two phrases keep coming up. He was lowly in, and he was lowly in heart and meek in spirit. And he, was, he is long-suffering with us. He forbear, you know, the wrong that's done unto him. He doesn't lash back out or try to get revenge or, you know, try to one up on someone. But he is constantly bearing our faults and the things that we do against him. If any of us got what we truly deserve, we'd all be in trouble. So let's be long suffering with each other and even with the the brethren that are not yet in the fold. Again, we must look out for these symptoms. You know, some people get, they, they literally turn, turn blue in the face. You know, some people have to loosen up their collar when, when they feel that heat going up all over them or coming down on them. And it, it comes down so quickly, the spirit of anger, that it causes us again to not take notice of consequences, but reacting to whatever it is that we are feeling at that particular moment. Um, let's look again on Ephesians, the four, um, the, uh, verse 31. We just read Ephesians 4, verse 1 through 3. And now we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. And it states, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Bitterness is a seed. You know, if you get angry long enough and it stays there long enough, it becomes the seed or we can even say fruit becomes bitterness. And bitterness can get so uh, deeply rooted in us, the root of bitterness, that it literally causes illness and sickness and wrath. That's uh, anger to a totally different level. Some people uh, go into a rage of anger. And so we must learn 
to put away wrath and anger and bitterness. You could see a degree here from bitterness. You go from just being angry. Well, actually, this even starts with um, evil speaking. This is what it literally brings out of you. Someone make, you know, your spirit not being in right standing, in the, in, in the right standing at a particular time because you've been wrong or for whatever reason that you become anger, angry. It says that, you know, you go into evil speaking and then there's clamor and then anger. This, this is lessening. So evil speaking, I would say, is even... Um, is probably the least of all these different things. But um, evil speaking, clamor, and then anger, then wrath, and then bitterness sets in. And bitterness is very dangerous even to our health. So we are to put away all of these things from us. You know, a clamorous person, they go on and on. They're constantly looking for a problem. And I, I, I have to admit, sometimes I fall in that category. Not clamor, but just nagging, you know? We all can fall into that um, category every once in a while. So sometimes I nag. And so, you know, I'm reading these scriptures today, not because I am so righteous or I've got it all together, but the word tells us to read and to learn about him. And when we do this, we have a different mindset knowing that the old man is dead and cannot get a rise, but the new man in me ought to be a certain way. So we have to train the new man to be more like Christ, and that is to be lowly in heart and to be meek in spirit and to be long-suffering and to forgive and to walk in love, which is walking worthy of our profession. Verse 32 declares that, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. You know, be kind to one another. For some of us being kind is, does not come easy. You know, uh, sometimes it's very hard and harsh, and um, some people are very mean-spirited. They're, they're mean, meaner than a junkyard dog, um, and they're Christians. So we must learn to not be mean and, and mean-spirited, but to be tender-hearted. That means, you know, I can put myself in your predicament, and I can feel what you're feeling. And I can respond with the right heart attitude. I can respond to, towards you the way I want to be treated. You know, putting someone else's need above my need. But when we become very selfish and self-willed and self-centered, it is easy to forget about kindness. You know, there's a book written that says, all I needed to know I learned in second grade, you know, be kind to your friends, share, be nice, talk nicely. All the things that we learned in second grade. So we all can truly do this if we have a made up mind, if we have the mind of Christ. I want to pray for someone right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you, if anyone out there is dealing with the spirit of anger, that you would break that yoke right now in the mighty name of Jesus, even as they surrender to you, recognizing through this teaching that the spirit that they're operating in is not like you, and that they need to be more like you, God. You want us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So I ask you, Lord God, that through your power and through your will, through your anointing, that you would destroy the yoke of the spirit of anger from over those who are watching this telecast to this evening. Lord, give them your grace, your mercy. Teach them, Lord, to be lowly in heart 
and meek in spirit. And we'll be sure to give you all the praise, the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Again, thank you for joining me this evening. I really appreciate spending some time with you. I hope that this lesson has been a lesson that of encouragement and that it will really help you in your relationships and also in your day-to-day -day interaction with others. God bless you. Again, if you want to catch these uh, telecasts, you can catch it on the Eternal Life Television. You can catch it on YouTube uh, or uh, Facebook or any social media. Please look for these messages. They will be an encouragement to you. Thanks for joining me again. God bless.